no son So maybe I can try to say a bit about uh, two halves of the course, ancient Greek and philosophy. Uh, on the ancient Greek side, this is a description for um, a period of study that runs from uh, often around about the formation of the Greek polis or uh, city-state uh, around the 8th century BC down to um, sometimes arbitrarily uh, around five or 600 uh, CE. Uh, and in those centuries, there's a kind of uh, flowering or development of all kinds of aspects of culture, not only in the region of uh, Greece, in the mainland, but also in the Greek language or um, influenced through Greek aesthetics and ideas around the whole Mediterranean world and beyond. Uh, maybe most notably through uh, a significant influence on uh, ancient Roman culture and later throughout Europe. Um, one way to kind of get at the, the significance of why we might be interested in stuff from ancient Greece uh, is just to think of some of the, the words that we use uh, describing uh, disciplines in the modern university uh, as well as their subjects. So words like uh, history, music, astronomy, uh, words like economics, uh, words like uh, democracy are all in their origin uh, ancient Greek words. If you think a little bit about all the ologies uh, at a university, that is every word that ends in ology, uh, geology, uh, psychology, anthropology, um, physiology, those are also mostly ancient Greek in their etymological source and the ology bit is from uh, logos, an interesting Greek word we're going to talk a lot about, which can mean something like uh, finding the meaning in things or trying to understand their, uh, their reasons. So uh, psychology, for example, is looking for the logos of the psyche, anthropology looking for the logos of anthropoi or human beings and so on. But throughout this, we've been using this term uh, ancient, uh, again, describing that kind of period in antiquity uh, when a lot of major developments uh, evolved in, in ancient Greek culture and, uh, and related cultures. But that doesn't mean that uh, a Greek as a language or a seat of, of learning and, and culture and ideas just stopped at the end of antiquity. This also comes back into uh, Byzantium uh, a whole wonderful sort of uh, uh, flowering again of culture and ideas in ancient Greek um, through what corresponds roughly to the European Middle Ages. There is a profound development of Greek learning in the, uh, in the Arab world, uh, written in Arabic after what's often taken as the end of antiquity, uh, again in uh, what's sometimes called the Renaissance, um, for example, in the 15th, 16th centuries in, in Italy and elsewhere in Europe, uh, there's a kind of rebirth of interest in ancient Greek culture, science, uh, spirituality and philosophy uh, that's really important in, uh, in the development of some of those disciplines in later and early modern Europe. Uh, and of course, uh, today, um, Greece is very much uh, living, thriving, fascinating and rich culture uh, to study. Uh, and the modern Greek language has changed remarkably little from ancient Greek. Uh, and despite changes in pronunciation, uh, and of course, some significant changes in how the language is used, it's amazing to see the similarity over 2500 years. Uh, some key ancient Greek ethical ideals that we'll talk about, like philoxenia, uh, or a kind of care for strangers, uh, guest friendship and hospitality are still very much alive as values in modern Greece as well. Okay, so how about this other half, uh, philosophy? So philosophy is a pretty familiar word, uh, even though it's pretty hard to pin down exactly what it means. Um, but in the etymological origin of the word, it's also uh, ancient Greek. Of course, that doesn't mean that only the ancient Greeks ever had philosophies. Uh, there's a great many cultures throughout history that have developed extraordinary systems of philosophy, science, and ideas. Um, this word is made up of two parts. 
the philo and the sophia. Um, the philo part kind of sounds like a pastry, uh, but in Greek it literally means uh, love or fondness or interest in something. And sophia, uh, this means uh, wisdom, insight, clarity, or understanding. So to be philosophical is to have a love of wisdom or a kind of interest in understanding. Uh, you could use this word in Greek to describe somebody just as being curious, uh, being sort of interested in understanding themselves and the world more. But it came to take on a special meaning for a particular kind of lifestyle that we'll talk about a little in the course, uh, in the wake of uh, Socrates, especially in the 5th century BC. Throughout uh, academic history in the traditions that were influenced by ancient Greece, for the most part, every discipline of study, uh, everything you might investigate, uh, was a philosophy. So uh, natural philosophy would include the study of uh, the stars, the earth, uh, the basic uh, makeup and composition of matter, um, movement, what we'd call physics, chemistry, um, uh, all of that. Then uh, moral philosophy might include uh, interrogation of our values, how we should live and make choices. Um, pretty much every kind of investigation, again, medical, literary, aesthetic, um, dealing with the arts, uh, would all be called a certain kind of philosophy, which makes sense if you think of that uh, literal meaning of the word. It's kind of the love of wisdom about something. A uh, little bit more recently, we've um, broken off different disciplines in uh, university and in other contexts and given them other names. So what Newton, for example, would have known as natural philosophy when he was working out laws of gravity is now known as uh, a field of physics or science. Physics itself is also a Greek word. Physical philosophy would make sense in ancient Greek, but we've kind of identified a different department of study. The result is that uh, today, often in many university contexts, we have many different departments that would have been called departments of philosophy, natural philosophy, moral philosophy, and so on, uh, doing different things. Uh, the uh, philosophy department in a modern university is sort of doing the things that are left over that haven't been hived off to another department, or in that ancient sense, another kind of philosophy. Um, and especially today, that might include fields like uh, logic, the understanding of inference and argument, and, and ethics. One more thing to say about the, um, the modern usage uh, that might be interesting. If you think of how, um, just sticking to English for now, the word philosophy is used, if you were to peek at the Oxford English Dictionary and look at a few of the different uses, there's, there's two that are especially worth contrasting. One, looking at philosophy as a particular system of beliefs, and the other looking at philosophy as describing a particular kind of spirit of inquiry, a, a way of being curious. So one way you could sort of uh, play with this is through some quotations from Shakespeare, nerdy way to play with something. Um, on the one hand, in Hamlet, uh, in Act 1, Scene 5, Hamlet says to, uh, to his friend Horatio as they're discussing this extraordinary event of apparently the ghost of his father coming to visit, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. In this sense, we're looking at philosophy as a particular system of beliefs, in a way, uh, what you believe, what you're kind of accustomed to, what you talk about, um, the system of commitments or the framework through which you interpret the world. So there's a lot of stuff out there that you might not yet understand. On the other hand, um, we can think of another uh, quote from the same scene in Hamlet, where Horatio confronted with the ghost says, Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And Hamlet replies, and therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. And that kind of describes this other sense, the, the sense of a spirit of inquiry, of curiosity, of engaging with and accepting with open arms the unknown. And now, of course, it's in that latter sense of curiosity that will especially meet the philosophies of the ancient Greeks and those that, that draw inspiration from Socrates in particular. No song.